Hey, Professor David Stuckler here. Today I'm going to show you how to write the hardest section of any paper, the introduction. It's so hard that I recommend saving it for last. It's a bit like you're delivering a present to the world and when you want to wrap that present at the end, you put the bow on top last. And that's what you want to do with the introduction. You only want to dive into it when you have crystal clear clarity about what you want to say and how everything's going to fit together, which most often happens after you've already finished your research. That said, many programs, departments might want an introduction just to see that you're on track, that you have a coherent, feasible idea and you find yourself pushed in this corner where, yes, I realize Professor Suckler says I need to do the introduction last, but I have to get this done now. So I at least want to do things in the right way. So what I'm going to do in this video is we're going to go through my formula for the introduction. That's right. Our publishing system has got the introduction, the methods, the results, the conclusions, every section, even research proposals down to a formula and it truly is a publishing system. I'm going to share with you some of those elements for the introduction today and I'm going to show you an example from natural sciences and social sciences to show you that this system really works across the board and you're going to be able to pick this up and apply it to your own introduction today and that's going to be really useful if English is not your first language it's going to take some of the guesswork out of the writing you're already fighting about on one front maybe grappling with the scientific English and writing at least we can get the structure and the content right so that you know what you you want to say and then you can focus on how you're going to express that in a very clear concise way so let's dive straight in i think the easiest way is not to tell you but to show you an introduction so that you can identify the key elements and look critically at your own so let me share my screen and as you can see i've come to the british medical journal to a paper that's hot off the press don't worry too much uh, about the topic but i just want to go straight to the introduction and what you'll notice about this introduction is it has the three-part formula the first part of the three-part formula is why are we having this conversation now what is the big debate what is a burning issue? And think about it from the mind's eye of a reader. Why do I want to stop what I'm doing and look at this paper and read this? And you need to get that right up front. And you can see it's got this here. This paper is saying, look, right, chronic pain is a big issue. We've been trying to stop an opioid crisis. And so people have been getting off long-term opioids, but we're worried that that's creating a new set of risks that maybe we hadn't thought about. So that's the first part. Second, and you can see it in the language right up front, you need to describe the gap. And what does this introduction go straight into? the second part of the three-part formula and it really can be that pithy it can be paragraph one paragraph two paragraph three you see this especially in natural and health sciences what has previous research found what do we already know and what do we still need to know to answer the big question to speak to this big issue that we just set up and you can see it really in the first sentence here it's saying hey we there's all this previous work but it has important limitations like the lack of high quality evidence and it's going to go through and using our peer system, which is our system we use for writing, check out the video here. If you haven't seen that already, it's gonna give examples and evidence of this to flesh out this point so that the reader understands what the big gap is. Finally, we've rolled out the red carpet here and we get to your study, your winning study right here. What is, what are you gonna do now to plug this gap? And, and it, you might lay out your main research question, say that clearly, say what your method is going to be. And really that's it, no need to overcomplicate, it is that simple that is the basic nuts and bolts of the structure now sometimes you need to expand a little bit and give the reader crucial context maybe you need to define a little bit more in this case about chronic pain about long-term opioids and alternative drugs that are available these are things that give your reader context so that anybody reading it they may not be experts on this topic they can access it they can participate in the conversation so you might need to quickly define the key ideas terms and concepts that are going to be relevant that's really important for your reviewers because you want to signal to them in, in a very rapid way, right? What is important about this paper? What is the novel? What is the contribution? Because if you make these mistakes and that's not there, it's one of the most common sources of confusion that reviewers come back and say, well, oh, this paper just, it's not novel. It's not really clear what the contribution is. I don't think it should be published. I, I think that's one of the main reasons that papers get rejected and it's really simple to fix by getting this formula right in the introduction. Let me show you another example so you can see that I'm not just cherry picking and I'm going to show you an example from the social sciences now so here I've got a paper from the prestigious American sociological review again hot off the press by the time I'm doing this video and you'll see a style that's 
very common in social sciences of being very clear of asking the big question right up front. Even doing that in the introduction and personally working in social science as well as natural science. I, I really like doing this because by asking that big question, everybody knows, oh, what, what's this paper about? What's it asking? What's this big question? And if they misunderstand that big question, um, then it, it, it may be that the question itself is not clear or they that the research question is just not really linked to a winning topic. And you want to make sure that you've written things clearly so that people understand what you're doing and you put it in the best forward light. There's a little bit of marketing in, in this introduction to really sell the value add of your paper. So by the way, if your question is not on point, I've always said that about 90, 95% of your success comes down to getting the right research question. We often expect people to just figure that out, but we've got a formula for that too. Check out this video on how you can use our convergence method to find a winning topic and research question. It really will change your research career if you can get that one skill right. Okay, but let's come back to the paper. And what I like here is that this first paragraph again, why are we having this conversation now? Well, I mean, it actually uses language that just says it very clearly for the readers. This is important because, this is important because it is making that very, very clear for readers signaling right up front, this is a burning issue. We need we need to understand it. This paper, because it's working conceptually, it's actually comparing two big hypotheses to answer these questions here. This one, the question is about if low wage jobs are a trap or can, they can actually help you advance. What it's gonna do then in describing the frontier of research after quickly defining you know, critical terms and what people need to know about the context of the research, it's gonna say, well, one hypothesis is this, one hypothesis is that, and give evidence for both. And that's really gonna help outline, here's the state of the evidence for this hypothesis, here's the state of the evidence for that but the gap is and that really rolls out once again the red carpet for in this study we're gonna do this and this is how we're gonna break new ground on these two competing perspectives and often you'll see this bit of signposting Got another video on signposting we could do a dedicated section on this and why it's so important to signal to your readers where you're going um, that's more common in social science articles but basically that same three-part formula that I'm talking about the debate the conversation why is it so important part one part two the gap and part three your winning idea or study it where you're gonna take the readers to plug this gap in your paper. Listen, if you get this formula right, you'll be able to do it in your sleep. And it's going to take that guesswork out of writing this incredibly different section that so many students agonize over and get stuck and lost and sometimes even just get to the point where they just want to give up and start to doubt themselves that they can even do this. But if you have the right tools and the right instruments, we can take complicated research and break it down into these small chunks to make it smooth and easy for you. So we've got more videos coming up that are gonna share elements of our publishing system. And if you just wanna shortcut that and learn faster, head straight to our Facebook group where we can be in direct contact. We have live workshops, a lot of valuable master classes where we roll up our sleeves and actually work on research together and get you feedback. So look forward to seeing you there. And you're not gonna to wanna to miss this next video on academic writing if you haven't seen it yet.